Yeah, yeah going yeah. on with yeah. George Bush, I, I seeing this course at the time, uh, it was civilization against barbarism. Mm -hmm. The same discourse you saw the U.S. cavalry against the Americans. Oh, by the way, prairie nigger. I never heard that word except in reading or in academic discourse. My brother calls me up last year. He's a garbage man in Rapid City, South Dakota. A little more darkly complected than I am. He says, Tom, I'll go up the alley, do my rounds in North Rapid. Some yay who yells out from the backyard, you prairie nigger, stop stirring up the dust. What? 2008. <clears throat> uh, so after I prepared my talk, I'm going through Blackout Speaks for the upkeep time to update the page number from my webpage this fall because every two years they change the edition on me just to torture me. <laughs> <laughs> But I come across this passage, it's right after uh, Wounded Massacre and Black Elk's out the raiding party, and he and his compatriots you know, fire off a few rounds at this mission. And Demali, the new edition, glosses this. I didn't know this before. He glosses this the future holy road for mission, which is the subject of my talk quite one year ago. Which is why we're glad to be. Uh, he says, pretty much in passing, there are many bullets in the mission yet. And I thought, you know, what a wonderful line, so metaphorically rampant, uh, so multi-valent and true. And so this synchronicity just, just struck me as very important. My real introduction begins like this. Uh, when we first arrived at the Indian boarding school, my brother and I, third and first graders, were assigned one locker which we deposited a variety of care package style food items their mother left us. And of which, as prototypically stupid young boys, we either immediately lost the key or forgot the lottery number, I don't remember. Throughout the school year then, that inaccessible locker was a lacuna, a gap, that gnawed at my brain like a gunshot wound from General George Armstrong Custer out bird hunting. Sorry. <coughs> when the authorities finally opened the locker for us at year's end, the various food items in the ransack of mice, rats, <coughs> copious rodent droppings of neglect in their stead. A poor trade off at last, much like the entire Europe yet. The age of innocence had been woefully exchanged for a bitter worldview of guilt and sin and low cultural self esteem. I knew my life would be downhill from there. I was right. I'd grown up in North Rapid City, South Dakota. And when my Indian mom had to get a divorce from my hard drinking Irish dad, she pretty much had to take a year off from, from us kids between restraining orders and actual flights and hidings from my crazy dad. So there we were, Timmy and me, at the Holy Rosary Mission, just outside Pine Ridge. They've subsequently changed the name to Red Cloud Indian School, and ostensibly the name changed the good thing. Uh, a reinscription of the native, as it were. I've heard nothing but good things from other educators about how progressive it is now, etc. I spoke to Cecilia Fire Thunder two years ago, the former tribal chair of Pine Ridge. Her memory of her days there was much more glowing than mine was. But she had nothing but the animals respect for us. But here's from the Red Cloud History webpage now. This is their blurb. In 1969, Holy Rosary Mission School officially changed its name to Red Cloud Indian School, <coughs> both as a token of respect for the man whose work has made it possible to found the school, and as a part of the program of re-identification, <coughs> meant to demonstrate to the world that Red Cloud was not meant to be an organization of cultural imperialism. Ooh, I don't think they should have uttered that phrase out loud. <laughs> you say, I'm not this. <laughs> There's a suspicion of something going on. <laughs> and uh, notice the, the, the hidden language, it's not that hidden even, the rest of the paragraph, how that, that binary that, that Susan was talking about, of white as superior to the native way, is still rampant. It's like this, we're not being close to the No, we want equality. Red cloud. But rather the product of a lasting bond formed between groups of two separate and equal 
cultures, hoping to enhance the best parts of both and serve the people of my great transformation. I wish I were that rhetorical skill. Uh, to this day, I continue the next the final paragraph. Red Cloud Indian School, Inc. <laughs> looks forward towards a brighter future for the children of Pine Ridge Reservation. Perhaps one less suicide. Perhaps one less blue sticker. Perhaps one less. I'm going to try to rise The schools work toward achieving Chief Red Cloud's dream of a Lakota youth who are able to walk equally as both orders. A Lakota people were educated and able to do whatever they want. Sure. On the reservation or off, and will choose to live in a good. What's the def def definition of good to a Jesuit? To go back. To a to a Obviously, the Western ethical worldview is, is, is a certain To live in a good way and strive to succeed like good natives turn the white people should you have to see this that's what western civilization is all about it's all about the individual to succeed wherever their path may take <coughs> such a clever discourse of power this is pertaining towards some equity attempting to efface its very cultural imperialism but notice that they didn't name a crazy horse again school. So that other Oglala Lakota, that off the res renegade, Red Clouds, a mighty warrior as he was as a young man, became an emblem in his later year, years as the assimilationist, even the, as they say in France, Oglala Lakota II, during World War II. Let's just say that the Jesuits weren't casual about their selection of the new heroes. Yes, these were the Jesuits. The black robes, in many ways, that preeminent proselytizing order of Catholicism. I can't escape. Their methods of brainwashing were physically imposing, psychologically comprehensive. To this day, I'm still a recovering Catholic, powering some laws, in that I still have to recover very well from those Jesuitical ways. It just occurred to me this morning. I'm still dressing like I'm all I need is a white collar. <laughs> my students ask me, Tom, why do you wear black so much? I say, I'm, I'm in mourning for something. It's, I just can't remember what. <laughs> so, I have, so I haven't recovered very well from my Jesuitical ways, which is Jesuitical ways. Here it is. Can't pronounce the word, it's so scary. As my wife ceases to remind me. So I call this talk a holocaust of the mind <coughs> with ramifications of colonization of the mind and with even a nod to the anthology entitled Genocide of the Mind, although that's a rather tortured metaphor. Huh? The point of all these titles is that the Western colonization of the native, short of a literal holocaust, has nonetheless entailed a force of internalization of the imperialist government on the part of the colonizers. To the point that the result has been a veritable near destruction of the indigenous culture and psyche. So I threw in an academic sentence there. Done with that. As evidence of this, my Indian mom was already Christianized enough to think that an Indian Catholic boarding school would be fine for Brother Me. Right? Even my old French Indian Mini Kanji granny has been a practicing Catholic, in spite of suffering the slings and arrows of blatant condescending racism in Fort Pierce, South Dakota. I'm not, I'm not even going to venture here into the controversy of black elk's particular religious views, uh, which are pretty much a conundrum in themselves.